Hi guys, I am Sira Chime, and I welcome you back to another episode of Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last episode, we took on Misty in a very super frustrating battle that I am still cringing about all this time later. We did manage to beat her just barely, but I think I'm scarred for life because of that battle. Well, thankfully, we beat her, we got the badge, so that is the end of it, at least for now. I will explain why later. Anyway, that's what we did last time. We got our Cascade badge from Misty. And in this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different, and that is we're going to take a very long trek to a city called Fuchsia City. So for those of you that have never played a Pokemon game or haven't played in a while, you might need a refresher. Let me get to our town map, and I'll actually show you what we're doing. So if I can actually find this thing, I know it's been a while since I've actually looked in my thing. Oh yes, I forgot. The town map's not your thing, it's in the Poke here. How soon I forget these things. <laughs> okay. So, we are going to make our way down towards Fuchsia City, which actually seems like a really long, far ways away. Because, well, here we are in Saffron City. We're going to have to make our way through Lavender Town, over towards Fuchsia City. And we, we could go through Celadon City if we wanted to get there. But I kind of want to take this route because there's something in Lavender Town I really want to get to. Now, I realize we could have gotten to Lavender Town from Cerulean City. But there is the dreaded rock tunnel there, and I don't know about you, but I would like to stay away from things that are still haunting me to this day that were horrible in my childhood. There's a much easier way to get to Lavender Town. We're just going to take Saffron City to get to it. Then after we take care of a few things there, we're going to proceed down through Route 12, Route 13, Route 14, Route 15 to make it to Fuchsia City. Now like I said, I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me when I say it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's actually the easiest route to take. It's much safer than the route you could take through Celadon City. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that accordingly. Now what you want to do to get to Lavender Town, I don't know who on earth would actually... And, and at least if Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, is there anyone on the planet that would literally take Rock Tunnel just to get towards Lavender Town? I know you had to do that in the main thing, but... Oh my gosh, why would anybody willingly go through Rock Tunnel just to get to Lavender Town? This is a much easier route, fewer battles, so I'm going to do it like this. Okay, so we've got these three guys right here, but yeah, I think I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> you actually can. That's going over here and hopping these ledges here. Now, there is actually a couple of... Oh, doggone it. Why does my OCD compel me to get items? <laughs> All right. Well, it might be worth coming over here to get this with just TM41 Torment. Well, that might be useful in competitive battling, but not so much here. The way that Torment pretty much works is it makes the Pokémon pretty much conflicted to the point where it cannot use the same move twice in a row. This is fantastic for Pokemon that use choice items, but not so much as far as in-game goes. Okay, so we do have this guy here, which is com- Doggone it! Well, this guy is completely bypassable, but my- I absolutely have horrible luck being a ninja, so we have to battle him as a result. Okay, let's hope that my luck is better on, because we got a long trek ahead of us, and yeah, we do have some major trainers we have to battle, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so this is actually is one of the required battles we have to take part in with this young couple here. We cannot get past them, I have tried, but anyway, Mo here says, Do I look weak? Don't make me laugh. When I'm with Lulu... <laughs> your girlfriend's name, Lulu. <laughs> that sounds like something you name a Zora. Anyway, I've got a hundred times more courage. If you say so. Lulu says, Mo and I are a great pair. You should prepare yourself. I am not preparing myself because look what these two trainers have. These two trainers have, of course, pre-evolved Pokémon. First stage Pokémon, to be exact. <laughs> well, this does actually introduce us to some Pokémon that we can actually find in the Hoenn region, which is actually kind of neat. Kind of curious how they got these Hoenn Pokémon, unless they traveled here from Hoenn. Well, that is a really real, real distinct possibility. But they're not that bad, just one Cross Poison and one Ice Beam later. That's it! We're pretty much done! Easy battle, just like that! Now, the rest of these trainers... There is one more on this route that is required, but it really is not the end of the world. If you have a water type, I'll just tell you right now, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So anyway, we got Mo who says, Wah! And Luhu who says, Eek! Yeah, I don't think I want to have any more conversations with these two jerks, so we're moving on. Okay, so this guy is not required. Let's hope I can actually sneak past him, and yes, I did. Haha, <laughs> I am a master ninja. Well, not really, but we're going with it. Okay, go ahead and send out Dopey, because this other guy right here is required, as I have said. So this guy, who happens to be a gentleman, 
is... I am but a gentleman stopped on the road. Would you care to join me in a quick contest? Why are you on the road? Don't you have better places to be than on the road waiting for stra random strangers? Unless you're a grown-up in this pedophilic Pokemon world, in which case I can only shudder to imagine what you might be thinking. We're going to stop that right there before it goes into dark territory that I really do not want to talk about. <laughs> okay, so this Growlithe is using Flamethrower. You know, actually, back on that previous thought, if you were going to do something dangerous, would you use a cute puppy Pokemon like Growlithe to accomplish that goal? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... I'm sorry. You just think about how weird this Pokemon stuff is. You're a 10-year-old child going about the world, helping adults with their problems. Dopey wants to learn amnesia. Well, if I was actually using Dopey for support, I would do that. But no, I do not want to learn amnesia. Anyway, you figure you've got these 10-year-old children, and they're out in the world and interacting with adults. You can't tell me there's not something wrong with this. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Okay, so with that... We have made it to Lavender Town, a town that has been known for being spooky, but in this day and age, three years later, it is not so much at all. Actually, it is a very tranquil town at this point. It's changed a lot in three years. Case in point, well, we've got this. This is pretty much the only graveyard at this point. Up here, this building up here used to be called the... I'm not exactly sure what it was called. But anyway, it has been turned from the Lavender Tower into the Kanto radio station. Now, this is both something that's kind of disturbing and interesting at the same time. I mean, well, this is pretty much just modern development at its best. They've taken some land, they've turned this old tower into something amazing, but... This was actually home to a lot of Pokemon, so it was basically a burial graveyard, so... Yeah, a little bit of controversy, but uh, it's impressive that they were able to turn this into something. Anyway, the reason that I brought you guys here is because there's actually something here that's kind of important. First things first, we'll talk to this lady. She says, Welcome! Thank you. I am so glad when people welcome me, but always, there's some catch to it. What is it? Feel free to look around anywhere on this floor. Yeah, as jerkish as this is, you don't get to explore the tower. You are stuck here because of the stupid Team Rocket incident. So, if you thought we were exploring Golden, or well, the radio tower here in Kanto, you are wrong. I am sorry. But there is something of usefulness here, and that is with this guy here. If you talk to him, he says, Ah, so you're the chime who solved the power plant's problem? Dude, I'm the chime that solves everybody's problem. What are you talking about? If there's a problem, I'm somehow always involved. Anyway, thanks to you, I never lost my job. How would you lose your job just because the power goes down? I don't see how that would affect you in any way. Anyway, I tell you, you're a real lifesaver. I'm glad somebody appreciates me for a change. Please, take this as my thanks. And with that, we ex receive the ex EXPN card. Whatever that is. <laughs> well, actually, what this is, is this, an, this is an expansion card that allows us to listen to radio stations in Kanto. Now, this will be useful for something I plan on doing a little bit later, but I'm not going to do it so much here right now because I've got more important things to do, which is to get to the next city. <laughs> so, yeah. That is literally the only thing here in Lavender Town that's worth your time. I mean, we do have another Name Raiders house. This is the only time in a Pokemon game where there are two Name Raiders in the same game. But I really have no need to rename my Pokemon. I mean, what am I going to do? Rename my fabulous Dopey something else? I don't even know what I'd name another Dopey if I got it. So yeah, there are, isn't really anything else here that's worth your time. And because of that, I'm just going to actually move on to the next area, which is Fuchsia City. That is where I want to go, and that's where we're going accordingly. Okay, so like I said, we do have a really long trek ahead of us getting to Fuchsia City. But it is very much possible to get there with maybe less than three battles. If you do not believe me, well, watch and you'll see for yourself. First things first, we must get the repels up because I hate wild Pokemon. I absolutely hate wild Pokemon. <laughs> okay. So we actually, like I said, can bypass a lot of trainers by simply surfing past the Mother! Quit calling me! Quit calling me! I have disowned you! You are not my friend! Okay, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. You can actually bypass a lot of the trainers just by surfing, but there is something along the way that you do want to get if you're trying to catch Pokemon for your Pokédex. So in here, there is this guy, which is the Fishing Guru. He is the Fishing Guru's younger brother. You seem to like fishing. Am I right or am I right? Actually, you're very wrong. I hate nature, and fishing is at the top of the list of things that I hate. Anyway, people say I have keen eyes. Uh, sure, if you say so. 
Yes, yes, just as I thought. Here, fishing fan, take this. It's a super rod. And with that, we obtained the super rod, which would have been so much more helpful in the Johto region if we got this earlier on. It is not so much here because, well, it's pretty late in the game, and I, like I said before we even started our Kanto journey, I don't advise you catch anything at this point. But anyway, that is there. If you want to catch Pokemon for your Pokedex, feel free to use it for whatever you want to. I'm not going to, but there it is if you want it. Alright, so we're going to have Dopey Dump in the water, and we're going to just continue surfing down, avoiding people. Oh my gosh, I wish there was a cheat in this game where you could just do this all the time. <laughs> not just, I'm not talking Game Shark stuff. I'm just talking things like this where you could just avoid trainers, hover above them. Oh, this is so awesome. I have never been so happy in my life. <laughs> Alright, unfortunately our journey ends at this point, but we can still move around without too many people finding us. Unfortunately, we are going to have to take part in at least one battle, and it's pretty much a pick your poison at this point. You're either going to have to battle that guy up there or this girl over here. I recommend you just battle this guy because he is a lot easier and he's just kind of on the way. So we're going to battle this guy as much as I really don't want to. And I really stress that I really don't want to. We're going to go ahead and send out Dopey, get him a little bit of experience. Or Batty, rather. Yeah, that totally looks like Batty, a pink bat. A purple bat with a pink Pokemon. Okay, so here's our first required battle, or our third one. So we'll go down and battle this guy, and he says... What does he say? Bow down before my regal Pokemon. Dude, I bow down to nobody. <laughs> you think I'm really going to bow down to your Pokemon? What do you have that's even considered regal, you jerk? Pokefan Alex. Well, he sends out an... A Nido King at level 29. Okay. So... Your Pokémon's low-leveled and you fully evolve them, but no, get them high-leveled and we keep them in their pre-evolved forms. Where is the logic in this region? I am honestly surprised that some, just some brilliant person has risen up, risen up in Kanto, as stupid as these people are, and say they're an alien from outer space and they have the entire Kanto region under their thumb. I cannot believe that. Okay, he's got this slow kick here. Is it at level 29 too? Oh, of course it is. Why would it be anything else? It's not like it would be higher leveled or anything like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really am surprised that there are still people that exist in Kanto like this. At least I got the flitch. That was nice. Alright, so that takes care of slow king. Next Pokemon he's going to send out. I have seen nothing that's worth even bowing to yet, jerk. He's about to send out a Magikarp. You know what? I'm going to send out a Flareon for this. I'd keep Betty out there, but it's too funny not to. My fire type's taking down your water type. <laughs> so I'll get this done. We'll be done with it really quick. All right, here's the worthless magic carp. This has been the... Oh my gosh, that thing's at level 65? That's even more stupid! Why would you raise a Pokemon to level 65 and not evolve it, but evolve everything that's lower level? Where is the logic in this stupid region? <sighs> I'm curious, can a Magikarp die to a flamethrower? A 65 Magikarp versus a level 46 <laughs> has the time advantage. What does a flamethrower do against this thing? What does it do? I need to know, just out of idle curiosity. Wow, that tells you how horrible Magikarp stats is that the level 65 Magikarp can't even survive a flamethrower from a Flareon. You got the type advantage, the level advantage, and you still lost to me. How how dare you mock royalty? What's royal? Your Magikarp at level 65? I don't know what's worse, the fact that he's got the thing at level 65 and his other Pokemon are at level 29, or the fact that he did not evolve this Pokemon. What'd you do, leave it in the daycare? Oh, well, I've got more important things to do than to worry about that, so that takes care of that. Thankfully, we do not have to do any more battles if you do not want to. I do not want to, so we are not going to. <laughs> okay. We do have this guy here that is going to turn various different ways. He's a hiker, so just in case something goes wrong, let's go ahead and send out Bloke just to be prepared for it. Okay, so if this guy looks away, yes, we have avoided him. Ha <laughs> ha. That is awesome. Okay, there is something a little jerkish here. I know this because in two of the practice runs that I have done of this... There is this guy here that looks up. We need him to look away like that, so this guy will not see us. So we'll wait for him to do that. And come on, dude, look away. 
Look away. There's nothing to see here. There's really nothing to see. Oh, doggone it, you jerk! Ugh. All right, this guy is not required. I've already done several battles already. So I'm going to bypass this guy, and I will catch you guys as soon as the battle is over. I will be right back. Boy, you guys missed a riveting battle with a Psyduck, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, I used Crunch on a Psyduck, that's all that happened. Totally not worth seeing. Okay, so as it turns out, this route is actually going to be a little bit important for a, for a little bit later on, at least if memory serves me right. But for the time being, it's just more of a nuisance, so if you will look away, kindly good sir, or not, I could always go around you. Would you please just quit looking at me? Ugh, oh, I hate these people. Okay, it's at this point that you're actually going to want to take the northern route to get around. Once again, I am throwing up repels because I have nothing better to do. <laughs> now, the trek up here, if you stay to the north, is actually a little bit easier, providing you can be ninja-like. I am not, but we'll try to do it anyway. So I think this guy is kind of actually locked to looking to the, to the south, and of course he would find me. Sorry about the cut there, guys. You really didn't miss anything, though I did find something out interesting. Ditto cannot use the move Transform if you have a semi-invulnerable move. So in other words, if your Pokemon's in the air or under the ground, can't use Transform. I did not know that. You guys maybe didn't either. But anyway, outside of that, you really didn't miss anything. A lot of these trainers are avoidable, which is why I am just cutting them out. I only want to show the ones that are important. I've done that. I'm good to go. <laughs> All right. So as we make our way along... We've got this person here, which again, my ninja skills... Oh, this is a horrible thing to come if I can't even bypass. Yes! Come on, Calcifer. Ha ha. All right. Now that we bypass that, we can actually just go over here and... Oh, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, all right. Pokemon time for a battle. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we could not actually get past this part without a required battle. So we're going to go ahead and actually show this one since I've cut a few out already. This person better have something Spinda. At level 43, well, he is a single Pokemon from... He is using a Hoenn Pokemon, so I guess I will let this one slide, but... I swear, I'm starting to think there's something here in Kanto, just the logic of this place. You know what, that's what I'm calling it. I am calling stupidity officially from now on Kanto Logic. I know it's a long way to say stupid, but... Seriously, people in here, Kanto Logic. I'm going with it. <laughs> Alright, about to send out... Illumise, or Illumise, as I've heard a couple of people pronounce that. I really don't know what you'd call that. I guess for this, I'll go ahead and send... I'll just keep Kalsper out there, finish this up quickly. But it is nice to see some Pokémon fully evolved for the change. Here in the Kanto region with our Kanto logic. <laughs> uh, it is nice to actually see some Pokémon in a different region than what they're actually supposed to, which... I'm actually really super excited about Pokémon Sun and Moon that's coming out in the Alolan forms they have there. It's very fitting to be playing a game like this and have stuff like that. Anyway, oh well. If this isn't such a big deal to you, why did you battle me? Whatever, if you actually proceed on, there's an item there, which is a PP up. It's really not worth it unless you're a competitive battler. Pretty much that raises the PP of your move, so... Yeah, there you go if you want that. Could be useful for competitive battling, but it's kind of pointless in this day and age. Alright, so with that, we have officially, after the major headache that has been this place... Made it to Fuchsia City. I told you it wasn't as bad of a route as you thought. It still had some rough spots for me, but it's not too bad. We made it to Fuchsia City, and it's actually a pretty nice city, or at least it was back in the day. Not so much here. And I guess while we've got a little bit of time left, we'll actually take, a time, take the time to look a little bit around. Now, sad to say, there's really not much left in the Fuchsia region, or at least the Fuchsia... There is not much left in Fuchsia City that's actually worth looking around for. Back in the day, there, this, was actually, this was actually home to the Safari Zone, but that is actually not the case any longer as... Well, if we could find the right person, maybe it's this one here. One of the Elite Four used to be the leader of the Fuchsia Gym. Yeah, that's not really helpful at all. Well, anyway, there's someone here that says back in the day this was actually home to the greatest attraction of the world, which was the Safari Zone, but it is not here anymore. Instead, it has been replaced by something called... The Safari Zone is closed. Instead, we have the Pal Park. Now this place here, let's just actually go in and talk to this guy and I'll kind of talk to you, I'll run you through it myself. So we talk to this guy, he says, welcome to the Pal Park. This is where top-notch trainers who aren't satisfied with the Safari Zone come to catch their Pokemon catching, or come to show their Pokemon catching techniques to their peers. Oh? 
Are you? Maybe? Ah, you are Chime! How is it I'm famous in this region from just a power plant prop? I didn't do anything! Oh, never mind. You know, there's probably a wire. Hey, Chime's coming to your area. Make sure that you get him to solve your problems. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there's telegrams like that. Anyway, my dad told me about you. Want to see the power plant worker? World is, you're a hotshot trainer and problem solver, apparently. We'd be honored if you'd participate in our catching show. Well, while I would do this, what this is useful for is transferring your Pokemon from third generation over to the fourth generation. So back in the day when these games actually came out, 2008, 2009, 2010, whatever these games came out, you could actually send your Pokemon over to the third generation or the fourth generation through the Pal Park. You could send six Pokemon a day, get them over here to the Pal Park, catch them, store them in your box. Then later on, you could transfer them here to your fifth generation games, and then from there to Pokemon X and Y. The reason I bring this up is because Sun and Moon are coming out. You might actually have Pokemon in the third generation that you might want to send over, and this is how you could actually do this. If you have Pokemon from Colosseum or from your adventures in Fire Red, Leaf Green, if there's anything you really want to send over, feel free to do so. You could do so through this method. I may actually show this at some point, but for the time being, I don't really have any use for it. Mother! Please, for the love of Godzilla, quit calling me. Ugh, no episode's complete unless I'm yelling at my mother, is it? <laughs> but anyway, there is that. If you want to transfer your Pokemon, feel free to use that. That is actually the way you start it. And like I said, I might actually use that for a little bit later. It'd be awesome to transfer my Fire Red team over here to do that. But unfortunately, I can't do that for reasons I can't necessarily specify at this time. Okay, so outside of that, there's only one other place that's really worth your time of day, and that is down here. It is something we're not going to tackle in this episode, but something that we are going to do next time. And the main reason I'm just showing is because, well, it's going to lead up to something that I'm going to talk about if you did not see it coming. That is the Fuchsia City Pokemon Gym with the leader, Janine. So yeah, the poisonous ninja master, something I am not. So yeah. The Pal Park and the gym are the only two important things in this entire city, and otherwise the rest of the city is completely worthless. Now in saying that, the gym battle with Janine is going to be a rough one, it's going to take me a while to get through it, it's going to be a headache, and that is something we are going to be tackling in the next episode. <laughs> I think we've done more than enough for now. We've made our way from Saffron City to Lavender Town and down here to Future City. So like I said, we've done more than enough for now. Next time in my Let's Play of Pokemon Soul Silver, we are going to take on Janine at the Future City Gym and try to obtain our 12th, 13th, 14th badge, whatever it may be at this point. I have totally lost track. So, till next time, I will catch you guys later. <laughs>